Thank you very much and uh, welcome this evening. Our world, if you think about our world, it's made up of over seven billion people. The seven billion people living in 196 countries, governed by 196 different governments. Our seven billion people in this world, we speak nearly 7,000 different languages. These seven billion people, they also follow more than 4,000 different types of religions. These are all differences that make us unique, each and every one of us. However, it's these differences as well that are the root of a lot of conflict within our world. If you were to turn on the TV, watch the news, Google any news on the internet, you read it, there's story after story involving these conflicts, whether it be religious persecution, civil unrest, political unrest, uh, the religious persecution as well, or just people being plain mean to each other. Whatever it is, the news is full of it. And all the time, time and again, we see experts on there telling us how we can fix it. And this has been going on for generations and generations, but yet we have an expert that's actually been able to fix it. Well, I think I have an idea where we might be able to fix this problem. So you see, as we become adults, we develop biases and uh, preconceived notions about the way people are going to act or interact with us based on their culture or their background or their beliefs. And these thoughts that we have about this, these thoughts become our emotions, and those emotions, well, they become our actions. And our actions is how we actually treat others around us. So the first thing we need to stop doing is stop acting like adults about it. And we need to start thinking like a five-year-old. Now, this idea actually came to me recently. I was at a local park with my son. And when we first arrived, there was a lot of kids already playing there. He went onto the, on the playground there. They immediately accepted him in. He started playing together, just like any other kids do. And that got me thinking. As I watched and continued to watch throughout the day, some children left, other children came in, and every time they did, they were automatically accepted right into the play with the other ones. Not once did they say, stop. You can't play with me because of the color of your skin. Not once did I hear one of the other children ask one of the other ones, oh, What's your political affiliation? Or ask, what's your religious beliefs? Why? Kids don't care about this. They're only there on the park for one reason, one reason only. That's to play and have fun. And if you're there, you're going to be included in that play and fun. So they got to think, if children are so good at accepting others, much better than we are as adults, how good can they be at solving problems? Well, as adults, obviously, we have all the answers. But actually, we don't. A few years ago, I was watching a documentary and they, these researchers actually gave adults a set of problems, and they gave ch children the same set of problems. And time and again, the children were able to come up with more than twice the number of solutions than the adults. They're much better at solving that. Why? They have no preconceived notions about the way things are supposed to work. They don't understand what impossible is. And I'll give you an example of this as well, again, involving my five-year-old son. Uh, recently, we are playing just before he was going to bed. He looked at me with a serious face. He said, Dad, I want to smell my hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had to ask him again, you want to what? <laughs> and of course, he repeated himself. My next question was, why? And he said, well, Mommy got a new shampoo. She said it makes her hair smell nice. And so I want to smell mine because I used it tonight. And I told him, I said, that's impossible. I said, your nose is on your face. Your hair is on your head. His response to that was, what if I use a straw? <laughs> yeah. And I thought about that for a second. I said, well, let's give it a go. So sure enough, he put one end of the straw in his nose, the other in his hair, <laughs> took a big whiff. Problem solved. He smelled his hair. But as adults, that's impossible. To children, it's not impossible. There's solutions to everything. So I'm sure some of you are thinking, well, how do I think like a five-year-old? You know, I've been an adult most of my adult life, most of it, not the whole time. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you tonight how to do it in three easy steps, OK? So the first step, let go of all your preconceived notions. Whatever you believe or think about different cultures, different people, um, whatever it might be, just let it all go. Have a clean slate. The next step, be understanding of differences. Because something's different doesn't make it wrong. Because something's different doesn't make it bad. That's just what it is. It's different. Understand that. Then the third step, and this is the most important one, so I really want you to pay attention. The third step is to have fun and enjoy life. Life is far too short to go around angry about other people's opinions. 
Life is far too short to be upset by these things. The world we believe in is the world that we live in, and the world we live in is the world that we create through our actions. So the next time you find yourself getting upset watching the news, listening to someone else's political views or views on the world, just stop thinking like an adult and start thinking like a five-year-old. Thank you very much.